Marvel's Avengers is a game where you won't just fall through the map, you'll be sent flying out of the map. You'll get stuck to walls, enemies won't spawn, buttons to open doors won't go down, and your session can stay bugged no matter how many times you reload a checkpoint. You'll suffer hard crashes, dailies won't reset, you can lose all of your in-game currency if you go over 30,000, unlocked cosmetics will be revoked, repeating audio glitches, and some people are actually getting infinitely stuck on loading screens, as well as having their progress wiped. Seems like everything about this game is telling you not to play it. It's a multiplayer game, but you wouldn't know it since the matchmaking is broken and has been broken. But the bizarre thing is, if you try to attempt to play this with three friends by inviting some, this game simply implodes. 80 years of Marvel content, and at launch this game has two villains, Taskmaster and Abomination. You'd think with only two that they'd work. No. What about Marvel locations? Can we fight in Asgard, Latveria, Atlantis, the X-Mansion, Savage Lands? No. None of those places. Currently, skins are mostly palette swaps. Bunch of trench coats for Black Widow, as if you'd want to cover that glorious ass. And different color shirts and pants for Thor and Captain America. Somehow, in 2020, this game has emotes, but no emote wheel, so you can only use one emote at a time. But honestly, with emotes like waving, saluting, and putting your hands on your hips, you'll wonder what the, f what the point is. Are you the type of person that would use a picture of a location as a nameplate? The developers sure think you are, enough to waste multiple slots on the challenge cards with them. But you know why the cosmetics are so stale? It's because the $12 takedowns are what this game wants you to buy most. Each hero only has two takedowns that you'll be seeing a lot of every time you initiate one. If you want more, you gotta buy them. You think that they'd work as far as the animation is concerned, but I think you know what to expect when it comes to this game. Two villains, no Marvel locations, broken everything, no emote wheel, nauseating, blurry, visual soup. After three betas, it's truly no wonder this game had less than 9,000 players so quickly after launch. More people were playing Fallout 76, and God bless you gamers, you recognized garbage, and you left. But I want to dissect this corpse, and the sad, lonely defenders of this game that I find daily. They almost outnumber the game's landfill of glitches. Patch 1.3.0 is make or break for this game's future. The combat and skill depth is this game's greatest strength. The sandbox, when it works, is fun. But it needs more heroes so people can play as their favorite heroes and way more villains. Taskmaster and Abomination at launch? What were you thinking? You're getting roasted in the comment section of your own fucking tweets because your game doesn't work and rightfully so we appreciate the efforts that you're making to fix your game but it definitely should have launched in a better state throwing 22 points onto the challenge cards of each hero is an interesting start in the way of compensation but when you've wasted so many slots on the challenge cards with palette swap skins and pictures of a bunker in the forest you should have just given people the money consider those who had their progress wiped Units stolen, skin patterns eaten by the fabrication machine, couldn't play because the game wouldn't load, or just generally felt robbed of their $60 because of any variety of reasons the bugs and glitches brought to the table. You should probably consider daily login rewards. 
ASAP and give people 30 V-Bucks or whatever the hell your game's credit equivalent of $30 is because let's be honest, what the hell are people going to buy anyway? Two takedowns so their characters can have more than two? Oh boy. Vision, Scarlet Witch, Quicksilver, Ant-Man, Wasp, Stephen Strange. When people say potential in this game, what they really mean are the countless heroes, and we're not even going to mention the X-Men, that they hope come to play because people want to play as their favorites. But to think that we'll have to wait over six months for this drip feed ass one hero a month garbage is insane. There isn't enough content here for that. Even assuming every issue is fixed, Horton Cells referencing the Human Torch, Meacham Buildings referencing the Iron Fist, these heroes in this game would be wonderful. But it feels like the wait would go way past this game's life expectancy. Ironically, one of the game's most consistent and meme-worthy bugs occurs at the Ant Hill when you're trying to pick up your daily challenges that may or may not work because these things aren't refreshing in the game in its current state. Talking to this NPC named Sarah Garbage will trigger her to just repeat the phrase, Seriously, Seriously you're, you're the, the best. best. Seriously, you're the best. If all glitches Seriously, in this game didn't affect gameplay like this, Seriously, people would probably love it as much the as they love Skyrim. But these glitches do affect gameplay, homie. Imagine getting to the end of a hive and not being able to finish it because the game breaks. Oh, do you want to continue playing? Yet somehow you got these lonely simps out here defending this two villain game with their brain damaged takes. I haven't had these issues happen to me. As if it invalidates anyone who has, often with video proof. I also hear, all games are buggy at launch. I'd like to see you make a better game. As if no one can ever say anything about anything unless they can do better. Pardon me for smearing some shut the fuck up in my hand and smacking you in the mouth. One thing this game can do is work. The virgin mods over on the subreddit for this dumpster fire banned me for acknowledging this game's faults in its early days. Kamala Khan is annoying to me. Well, the chimera. Is this really happening? I'm Iron Man. Indeed. I am Iron Man. You know, what? in one of my stories, Iron Man has to shoot out a bunch no! of... No! I mean, I just flew on a Quinjet to a secret shield base. Uh, we saw Nick Fury, and, and now I'm talking to Jarvis and not keeping my cool at all. <laughs> what are we supposed to do but hate this bitch? But if that's your cup of tea, by all means. Comedically, even the mods can't contain the echo chamber of positivity in the face of crippling issues that are turning the masses away from this game. Issues the developers themselves acknowledge and often offer workarounds, spreadsheets on how matchmaking works, even suggesting that you simply don't play the game or use the fabrication center until this patch goes live. I hear you devs. But in my opinion, even with everything fixed, this game needs hard core changes. We should be able to issue commands to AI companions and not just hack this terminal or smash this door, but use your ultimate here on this target or options to set whether they prioritize light combo finishers, heavy combo finishers, power attacks, signature attacks, or for heroes like Iron Man, whether they prioritize lasers, missiles, or repulsors. Because we have grinded these builds that they won't be utilizing when they play them. But maybe you'll say, oh, well, you know, you should be playing with real people. And I'd say fair enough if your game could handle us being partied together right now. This game could have really used a patrol type mode where let's say AI companions can't go. It's just real players that land and we can run around and then drift into each other's sessions and like play with each other the way Destiny and Fallout 76 have been doing. We need to be able to join friends in progress. We need lockers to save our loadouts. We need to be able to lock our gear. Takedown should be allowed anywhere around these enemies. Even if we're hovering, we're superheroes. Why don't you just make them leap into the correct position? And you should teleport the AI for the team takedowns instead of having us 
you know, watching them awkwardly try to figure out the pathing to get into the right position. It's sad. This shit is sad. The lack of locations in this game could so easily have been fixed if you allowed for the fucking harm room to holographically create different environments. At least then we could fantasize that we're fighting on Asgard or on the deck of a helicarrier instead of waiting five months for you to add these locations. You think this game will survive that long? Throw Loki, Red Skull, hell, even Stilt Man into the harm room. They don't have to talk. We could just beat them up. If this patch doesn't add things like this, I really hope it survives the next months. Because when people think Marvel, they think this. They sure as hell don't think this. When you ask people who their favorite Marvel character is, they'll probably give you an X-Men. Maybe they'll give you one of the OG Avengers. If they're badass, their favorites will match. But you know what they don't say? Kamala Khan. Is this really happening? Not having Marvel skins is fine. But not having comic book skins either? Jesus Christ. And then you're editing old classics like, why? Because men can be sexy, but not women. Okay. If you want this game to succeed, Crystal Dynamics, appeal to the players. Not to blue check marks on Twitter. Community challenge. Defeat 750 million enemies with melee attacks. Your reward? A Miss Marvel nameplate. Am I out of touch? No. It is the players who are wrong.